This presentation covers the management accounting technique of activity-based costing. Traditionally, manufacturing was labour-intensive. It made sense, therefore, to trace overheads to products, or to absorb, based on the number of labour hours worked, or the number of units produced. Absorption costing was used for this. Activity-based costing is an alternative to absorption costing. It recognises that today manufacturing is no longer labour-intensive and looks for new ways to trace overheads to products. Before delving into activity-based costing in more detail, it is important to put this treatment of overheads into some context in terms of how they were traditionally treated under absorption costing. Company A manufactures two products product P and product Q. Company A is trying to calculate the cost per unit of production of product P using an absorption costing system. Material and labour are direct costs. We can link these costs to each individual unit of production. So the material cost is 50 per unit and the labour cost is 40 per unit for product P. Indirect costs are also known as overheads. These costs cannot be linked directly to each unit of production, so we must find a suitable method of allocating the overhead amongst the units. Traditionally, under absorption costing, the overhead per unit is calculated based on the overhead absorption rate. The overhead absorption rate uses one basis of absorption. In other words, one way to divide the overhead amongst the units. So, Total overhead is divided by the total number of labour hours, or maybe the total number of units produced. Say, for example, total company overhead equaled 3,000, and it was decided to absorb overhead based on the number of units produced. Let's say 70 units of product P, as well as 30 units of product Q, were produced. In other words, 100 units in total. Then the overhead absorption rate per unit of each product would be $30, being 3,000 of overhead divided by 100 units. Total cost per unit of P now equals $120. Company A may have decided to absorb its overhead based on the number of labour hours worked. So if, for example, 250 labour hours had been worked in the period, then the overhead would be absorbed at the rate of $12 per labour hour. If we assume that each unit of product P required two labour hours, then the overhead absorbed by each unit would be $24, being two hours multiplied by $12 per hour. Total cost of unit of product P now equals $114. Under absorption costing, company A could also have absorbed its overhead using other bases of absorption, such as number of machine hours worked or using the prime cost of each unit as a basis of absorption. In the modern environment, activity-based costing recognises that overheads are no longer driven by manufacturing activities only, or the number of units produced. Overheads are incurred as a result of product research and development, design, technology, after-sales service for example, all of which focus on improving the quality of the product. Different products consume these company resources in different ways, thus incurring overheads at a different rate. So, bearing this in mind, activity-based costing looks for a new way to trace overheads to products. In other words, a new way to absorb. Material and labour are direct costs in our example. We can link these costs to each individual unit of production. There is no difference in how we treat direct costs under absorption costing and activity-based costing. So, the material cost of $50 per unit and the labour cost of $40 per unit for product P are the same under activity-based costing as they are under absorption costing. However, under activity-based costing, the overhead cost per unit and so the total cost per unit will differ to the $30 and $24 we have calculated using absorption costing. This is the focus of this presentation. Activity-based costing will perform an alternative calculation to derive the overhead cost per unit, 
resulting in a more accurate reflection of the overhead attributable to each product and thus a more accurate product cost. There are four main steps involved in calculating the overhead cost per unit under activity-based costing. Step 1. Separate the overheads into cost pools. Step 2. Identify the cost driver for each cost pool. Step 3. Calculate the overhead absorption rate for each cost driver. And Step 4. Use the overhead absorption rate to absorb costs from each cost pool into the units of production. This calculates the overhead cost per unit. Let's apply these steps to a new comprehensive example. Costing company produces two products, product A and product B. The budgeted cost information for each product is as follows. The direct material costs are given as 35 for product A and 45 for product B. Similarly, the direct labour costs are given as 25 for product A and 20 for product B. The production overheads are broken into different types or cost pools. The cost pools are machine costs, setup costs and quality inspection costs. The total overhead per each cost pool is 300,000, 700,000 and 250,000 respectively. Total production overhead amounts to 1.25 million. For each of product A and product B, we are also told the number of production units, the number of production runs, the number of inspections and the machine hours spent producing these units. There are two requirements. Number one, calculate the cost of each unit of product A and product B under absorption costing using the number of units as a basis of absorption. And secondly, calculate the cost of each unit of product A and product B using an activity-based costing system. Let's calculate the cost per unit under absorption costing. The material and labour costs for both product A, 35 and 25, and product B, 45 and 20, have been given to us in the question. These are the direct costs. The overhead totals 1.25 million. Using absorption costing, the total overhead will be absorbed on the basis of the total number of units produced by the company. Product A has 25,000 units of production and product B has 50,000 units of production, meaning a total number of units equaling 75,000. So, the overhead absorption rate is $16.67 per unit of production, being the overhead of 1.25 million divided by 75,000 units. If we add the overhead cost per unit to the material and labour cost, the total cost per unit of product A and B amounts to $76.67 and $81.67 respectively. We know that this is the cost per unit under absorption costing, or the traditional cost per unit, in which overheads are absorbed based on production volume, in this case the number of production units. Let's calculate the cost per unit using activity-based costing. As outlined above, a four-step approach will be used to calculate the overhead cost per unit. Step one is to separate overheads into cost pools. This has been done for us in the question, in that the total company overhead of 1.25 million has been separated into three overhead types, or cost pools. The cost pools are machine costs of 300,000, setup costs of 700,000, and quality inspection costs of 250,000. Step two is to identify the cost driver for each cost pool. Here we need to determine what is driving each of the three overhead types. The cost drivers are typically given in any activity-based costing scenario, and it is the job of the student to link the cost driver to the cost pool. So, the first cost pool, machine costs, is driven by machine time, or the number of machine hours. Setup costs are determined by the number of production runs, while quality inspection costs are driven by the number of inspections carried out. 
Step 3 requires us to calculate the overhead absorption rate for each cost driver. Now that we have linked the cost drivers to the cost pools, we can calculate the cost driver rate or overhead absorption rate. This is calculated as the overhead per cost pool divided by the cost driver incidence. So the machine overheads are 300,000. The number of machine hours or cost driver incidence is 100,000, being 50,000 hours for each of product A and product B. This produces a cost driver rate of $3 per machine hour, being the overhead of 300,000 divided by 100,000 hours. Thus, each machine hour used in the production of A or B will incur an overhead charge of $3. Similarly, setup cost totals 700,000. The total number of production runs is 280, being 200 for product A and 80 for product B. Hence, the cost driver rate, or overhead absorption rate, is 2,500 per production run. The final cost pool is quality inspection costs, which total 250,000. The cost driver here is the number of inspections, which total 750, being 250 for product A and 500 for product B, resulting in a cost driver rate of $333.33 for every inspection. In step 4, we use the overhead absorption rate, as calculated above, to absorb costs from each cost pool into the units of production. This will calculate the overhead cost per unit. So, for product A, machine costs of 150,000 are absorbed, being 50,000 hours at $3 per hour. Setup costs of 500,000 are absorbed, being 200 production runs at 2,500 for each production run, and quality inspection overhead of 83,333 is absorbed, being 250 inspections at an overhead absorption rate of $333.33. Total overhead absorbed by product A equals 733,333. Similarly for product B, Machine costs of 150,000 are absorbed, 50,000 hours at $3 per hour. Setup costs of 200,000 are incurred, being 80 production runs at 2,500 per production run, and quality inspection overhead of 166,667 is absorbed, being 500 inspections at an overhead absorption rate of $333.33 per inspection. Total overhead absorbed by product B equals 516,667. Having calculated the total overhead attributable to product A and B, we can now generate the overhead for each unit of production. 25,000 units of product A have been produced, meaning an overhead per unit of $29.33. This is made up of the total overhead of 733,333 divided by the total A units of 25,000. Similarly, 50,000 units of product B have been produced, meaning an overhead per unit of $10.33. Finally, now that the overhead cost per unit has been calculated, we can add this to the direct material and labour costs to derive the cost per unit of production. This all means the total cost per unit of product A is $89.33, while the total cost per unit of product B is $75.33. Let's focus on the allocation of the overhead between the two products and understand how activity-based costing has split each overhead type between product A and product B. As discussed above, on a total basis, A has incurred more overhead than B. Both A and B have used the same number of machine hours, 50,000, meaning the same machine overhead is absorbed by each product, 150,000. Even though B has used twice the number of inspections than A, 500 compared to 250, thus incurring twice the amount of inspection overhead, 
Product A has used 200 production runs compared to B's 80 production runs. Given the significant overhead absorption rate of $2,500 per production run, Product A absorbs $500,000 of setup costs compared to $200,000 for Product B. So, activity-based costing considers the activities that drive costs and traces overhead to products based on this. Essentially, the more activities, or the more use of company resources, then the greater the overhead absorbed. Overall, there's a different cost per unit for each product when comparing absorption costing and activity-based costing. Under activity-based costing, product A cost per unit has increased from $76.67 to $89.33, while product B has seen a decrease in the cost per unit from $81.67 to $75.33. Given the more precise allocation of overhead under activity-based costing, each unit has a more accurate cost. The cost per unit has knock-on implications for product pricing decisions and product viability. Ultimately, there are longer-term implications for the company's decision-making and planning. In the modern environment, overheads relate to product design and research, customer service, and other such product-sustaining activities. Absorbing overheads based on production volume is no longer as relevant as it once was in the past. This supports the use of activity-based costing in the modern environment, resulting in a more accurate reflection of the overhead attributable to each product, and thus a more accurate product cost. Despite its perceived superiority, problems can arise when implementing an activity-based costing system. Activity-based costing is a more complex costing system. It may not be fully understood by many managers, and therefore not fully accepted as a means of cost control. Staff within an organisation may be resistant to such change. At a minimum, activity-based costing training would be required, which would represent a cost to the company. Difficulty can arise in identifying appropriate cost drivers. It is not always easy to identify a single cost driver that is specific to a particular overhead. Indeed, this can be an arbitrary process. Activity-based costing relies upon detailed accounting records in which cost pools and cost drivers are identifiable. Compiling such records can be a time-consuming and costly exercise. 